Hey, Generation Church, it's good to be here with you. And uh, thank you for letting us be a part of your family uh, for the time that we were. And uh, thank you to our pastors. Um, it's been a privilege to, to be under their leadership and under their covering. And we are excited about what God's going to do and where he's taken us. I've just been saying, though, uh, to everybody over the last uh, couple of weeks, it's just bittersweet. Um, excited about the future. Definitely going to miss everybody here, though. Um, I'm, I am uh, honored that Pastor Ryan asked me to bring the word tonight. And I do feel uh, like God put something on my heart for us today, whether you're in the room with us here in Mesa or you're joining us online at our online campus, I do believe God wants to speak something to you today. And this is, uh, I just kind of was thinking, this is, this is like a family talk. This is, and, and the good thing about Generation Church, it's easy to be a part of our family. So even if it's your first time, hey, welcome home. We're so glad that you're here and you are a part of the family of Generation Church. And with that, I just, I just want to encourage you today. And I just want to, I want to talk about, I want to talk about life and the journey that life takes us on through these years that we get here. But I want, to, I want to make this statement that I believe with all my heart, and that is that I believe life is about becoming who God has created you to be and doing what God has called you to do. I believe that with all my heart. Life is about becoming who God's created you to be and doing what God's called you to do. The thing with that is this is a lifelong journey. And so today I want to talk about it's all about the journey. It's all about... The journey, And I want to look at the words of a man who found himself at the end of his journey and some words that he penned to a spiritual son of his and a, one that he was mentoring for many years before his life. And, and, and his name was Paul. And in the, the book 2 Timothy that we find in Scripture, in chapter 4, we see him putting down some words that are some of the last words that he will ever speak or, or put on paper and, and mention. And I thought it would be fitting looking at that as we talk about the journey of life to see what this man who, if you don't know his story, was a persecutor of the church, one who would arrest and actually even kill those who profess Jesus as Lord and Savior. Then Jesus radically changed his life, got a hold of him, and he became one of the most influential followers of Jesus that we've ever seen on our earth. His name was, was Saul. It was turned to Paul. And he was so good at spreading the gospel of Jesus that they ended up killing him for it. And we actually find him, in, and as he's writing in 2 Timothy, we actually find him in a prison somewhere, in a dungeon, and he knows that the end is coming soon. And he writes a bunch of words to his spiritual son, Timothy. And I want to look into that uh, tonight. It says this, starting in verse 1, I solemnly urge you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who will someday judge the living and the dead when he comes to set up his kingdom, preach the word of God. Be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. You feel like we're in those days today. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. As for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. Let's pray over God's word. God, we thank you that your word is alive. It's active. Got something written thousands of years ago is so relevant for us today. I pray, God, that our ears would be open to hear that our minds would be open to understand and our hearts would be open to receive. God, let this word change us from the inside out. And let us walk out of here knowing we're better than when we came in because we have encountered you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. And God, I, I just sent you in this moment, and so I pray right now, God, for a victory for the Arizona Cardinals to get tonight against that team that we shall not name. In Jesus' name, amen. 
God's favor is already over this. He changed the time so I could watch it after the, that prayer was for our pastor and it was anointed. So, <laughs> hey, I wanted, I wanted to kind of check the room and see what kind of people we have here tonight and see how many uh, thrill seekers we have in here or risk takers. We got any risk takers in the, in the house. You, you, like, you like the thrills, you like the risks, right? I'm not talking like you had Taco Bell last night. I'm talking... I'm talking like you, you would think about, or maybe you already have done things like skydiving or bungee jumping, right? Those types of things, which probably means, do we have any roller coaster lovers in the house today? Yeah, there's a lot more of those. Yeah. I'm not one of those. Um, honestly, I hate, and I mean with all capital letters, hate roller coasters. There's something about them that uh, just really makes me um, want to never live again. I... Do, I I've never been on something that made me feel like the devil was involved with what I was. So <clears throat> I don't like, especially like the massive rides, the huge rides, like the ones that you find in places like Six Flags and you got like 200 plus foot drops and all that kind of stuff. I can't say it. So that means I love Disneyland. <laughs> because they have rides that are my size. That's why I, that's why I like it. And uh, uh, several years ago, I went to Disneyland with uh, my family and then my cousin and his family. And my cousin tricked me into going on to this ride that was at Disneyland. I thought it was safe. I didn't know. I should have known by the name because it was called the Tower of Terror. And uh, I, I, I should have allowed that to be, you know, my indicator that I'd want nothing to do with this. But I let him talk me into it. And we went on the rides. My wife was smart. She said, I'll stay with the kids. And... And I go on this, and I'm a, I'm a wreck before I get on the ride. Like, I psych myself out, right? So at, as cl the closer we get to this ride, I'm going crazy. I'm, I'm starting to pray and fast and speak in tongues and whatever I can do to muster up the courage I need to do this. So we get on this ride, and uh, I immediately buckle myself in, and I'm a little disappointed that all they have for this ride is a, is a seat belt. Um, and I, but then I start looking for what I always do when I get on a roller coaster is I look for something to hold on to. So I'm looking for a guardrail, and there's nothing in front of me, right? Like even when I'm on Peter Pan, I grab the guardrail. That's how, <laughs> that's how I work. So I can't find it. Somebody told me years later they're actually on the side of your seat, and I could have just held on to that. But I couldn't find them because I was freaking out so much, so I just held on to my seat belt the whole time. I was really uncomfortable, but I... I get on this ride, this ride starts, and just immediately the music, all this kind of stuff has got me going like, this is not going to be, you know, very enjoyable. And it starts turning you all these different ways, and then all of a sudden you drop a little bit, you go high, you go up, down. And, and I can't figure out what direction we're going because it's all in the dark. And then all of a sudden the ride stops, and these doors open, and I see that we're sitting about 500 feet in the air. It's not 500 feet, but it just sounds better. So... <laughs> And I we're looking over Disneyland, and I can't, and I, and, and I, I'm so scared. I'm mad enough to say it. I was so scared, I turned away. I couldn't look. And then I realized, like, I, I quickly had the voice in my head that said, Brandon, it's Disneyland. They take pictures of everything. And so I just decided, I can't be, I can't go out like a chump with, with the picture of me not looking. And so I forced myself to look forward. And sure enough, as soon as I did, man, that ride, it dropped and then it went up again, it went down again. I lost track of where I was on this earth. And, and it was so crazy. I, I was very upset with my cousin. I may have disowned him for a few years. Um, it was, I, I got done and I might, I might have kissed the ground. I was so happy to be, be, be alive and be okay. But you know what's funny is I, I actually, I think about that ride often when I think about life because the ride of life, the journey of life, many times has us going up, down, all around, sometimes not sure what direction we're going, if we're going to be okay. Those moments where you go, I, I'm not sure if that was fun and satisfying or just simply terrifying, right? And, and so I, I think about life in that, in that way, and, and, and honestly, I thought that for sure someday I'd come to a point where my life... Everything in it just kind of worked out smoothly, you know. Um, I, I thought there would be a moment where, where I could just enjoy the, you know, the American dream doesn't help us with these thoughts. 
you know, the American dream just tells you, you can become whatever you want to become, Johnny, if you just try hard enough. And I just want to say, no, you can't. Stop trying to sing and try out for American Idol. You know, like, <laughs> you can't do anything, right? Or those, those moments that, you know, you're watching the game or you're watching something on TV, and it's like, you, you can't enjoy life. You cannot enjoy life. Until you have experienced the Mr. 3,255 steps, you know, or whatever it is. Like, it, everything they say to you is like, this, this product, this thing will make your life everything you wanted it to be. I thought we'd get there someday. I thought I'd, I'd get to a place where everything just worked out. I've come to realize that my frustration level goes a lot higher when I get focused in on a destination rather than just enjoying the journey that God has me on. You know, the destination's like, man, I just, I just want, I just, if I could get that promotion, you know, I just, everything would be better. Just a little bit more money, you know, if we could, if we could just kind of climb to that next level, everything would be, if we could just get that upgraded you know, car, vehicle, we, we'd be all right. If, if the house was just a little bit bigger, you know, you hear people in doing ministry, you, you, you have conversations with people all the time and they think, you know, like if I could just find the Mr. Right, you know, I, life would just be better. And, and all the married people say, yeah, right. And um, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Uh, I, I, we have all these destinations that we look at and I've come to realize that that brings more frustration to me when, I, when I'm focused on the destination rather than just trying to enjoy the journey that God has me in life. And, and, I, and I believe this to be true, that as a follower of Jesus, I enjoy life so much more when I focus not on destination, but on the one who is guiding me through this journey. It, it, it allows me to actually enjoy life at a greater level when I stop pursuing destinations and I just pursue the one who's guiding me on this journey. For those of us that are followers of Jesus, if there is one destination that we can look forward to, Paul alludes to it in 2 Timothy, but it is a destination that none of us will, will get to on this earth, on, in this world. It, it is eternal promise that God has given us of eternal life, and in a perfect world, and in heaven, and, and, and the gift that he has for us. But it's not something that's going to happen here. And so when we focus on destinations here on this earth, we're going to continually be frustrated and feel like we never get quite there. And so this life, on, on this little rock we call earth, is all about the journey. It's all about the journey. I... Um, I find it, uh, when I think about the journey, I, I find it tough sometimes to even accept that, that it's about the journey because the journey, as I said before, it's not smooth. The journey has its ups and downs. The journey is, it does feel like the Tower of Terror sometimes. It feels like that roller coaster. And I, I, like I said, I, I wish it was smooth. I wish it was quick. I wish it, it just happen and everything just went without any hiccups or speed bumps or or difficulties but that's not what well, I like things to happen quickly like I'm the one I there's no I don't want to drive like the side roads because that sounds fun I want to drive on the interstate and go as fast as I can in fact I don't even want to drive I want to fly right I, I just want to get there um, and yet that's not how life works that's not how that's not what the journey is for people who are trying to become who God has created them to be and do what God's called them to do. And so have you, have you ever been in the place where you, you kind of even ask that question and you wonder why is life a roller coaster? Have you, have you looked into it? Like, why, seriously, why does, why does life have to be so up and down sometimes? Have you asked God that? I, I mean, I have. Have you asked God like I've asked him? Like in the moments where you just go, why God? Why? Right? When you, when you say, hey, hey, hey God, uh, did, you, did you forget about me? Right? Did you forget about me? I, I feel like, oh, you've never been there. Okay, that's fine. You can act like that. It's just me. I'll preach to myself tonight. You've, 
I know you've been there. You, those, those moments where you think, what, what is going on? What, if you never experienced those, those moments of life, welcome to 2020, right? Okay, we can, we can all relate now. I've learned that some of the reasons why life feels like a roller coaster is simply it's due to the fact that we live in a fallen and broken world that won't stop hurting us. Our, our, our world, the system of our world is broken, and it, and it won't stop hurting us. Because of the circumstances that we deal with in life, and, and, and I get it, and I, and I hear some people say sometimes, man, I, I am praying for world peace, and I understand that prayer, but I, I just want you to realize that it won't happen on this earth. That at least won't happen until Jesus comes back and establishes his throne on this earth. We can't accomplish world peace on our own because this system is broken. I, I, I know and I'm with you 100% when I hear people say things like, we need to end racism. I'm with you. I want to see the end of racism, but it can't happen in this system because it's broken and it's fallen and this world system will continue to hurt us. There's as well, you all know it, we'll continue to have moments and relations where the relationship we have end up offending us, end up hurting us. Even the people that we love and we care about, they, they can say things that hurt us to the core. You can feel like you've been stabbed in the back. Those are the moments. These are the moments that cause ups and downs. And when it's all said and done, we do have an enemy. We have an enemy, and the Bible says that his job is simply to steal, kill, and destroy all the good things that God has for you and for me. And so Peter put it like this when he wrote to the church. He, he said in one of his letters, he said that the enemy, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. And so life is up and down. The key for these moments of life is simply to stay on the journey. Simply stay on the journey. I want to encourage you tonight, don't jump ship. Don't jump ship. One of my favorite stories of Jesus comes when he and his disciples get in a boat and they go from one side of the sea to the other side of the sea. And in the middle of the sea, in the middle of the night, a massive storm comes up, so much so that which most of his disciples were professional fishermen, found themselves scared to death, thinking they were going to die. And you know where Jesus was in this moment? He had found a pillow, and he was taking a nap in the back of the boat. <laughs> His disciples come to him, wake him up, and say, Jesus, don't you even care that we're going to die? And Jesus looks at him and says, why do you have such little faith? Why, why did he say that? Because he knew as long as you're in the boat with me, you're in the safest place you could be. And I want you to know, don't jump ship. Jesus is with you. You're going to be okay. Don't jump ship as well. I want to encourage you tonight to allow Jesus to be everything that you need. Allow Jesus to be everything. You hear it a lot in our church, and you'll hear it around. People say things like, Jesus is everything. And, and, and we really mean that. But I know sometimes you can hear that and be like, yeah, but I need my bills to be paid. Yeah, but I, I got... I got a bad report from the doctor. Yeah, but I need this relationship to be restored. And I just want to encourage you that Jesus is truly everything you need in every situation, in every season, and in every moment that life brings your way. Yeah. Through every step of the journey, Jesus is everything you need. Watch how Jesus says this in Matthew chapter 11. And I'm going to read it out of a different translation, one called The Message. And it's really kind of a paraphrase translation that Eugene Patterson put together so that we could understand it really well. Jesus says this, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Well, come to me. Jesus says, come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't... I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. And keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. I believe it with all my heart. Jesus is absolutely everything that you need. Jesus even said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. Notice how he said it. He didn't say, I'll show you a way. He didn't say, I'll, I'll, I'll reveal to you some truth, or I'll, I'll show you a good way to live life. He said, I am all of those things. What your pursuit 
in life should be is me because I am everything that you need. I believe that with all my heart. Did you know, did you know that Jesus knows how to take care of you? Jesus knows how to comfort you. I, I love the shortest verse in the Bible, John eleven thirty five. 35, then Jesus wept. That's right, I memorized it. <laughs> Sunday school works for me. Um, the coolest part about this story is Jesus, when he is weeping, he is weeping with two sisters who have lost their brother, Lazarus, who has died and has been dead for three days. The, the incredible thing is Jesus in this moment knows that he is just a few moments away from raising Lazarus back to life. And yet in this moment, in their time of weeping and mourning, Jesus realizes what they need is comfort, not a pick-me-up. So Jesus knows how to take care of you and me because it would have made sense for him to be like, hey, stop crying. I'm about to go, you know, pull him out of the ground. Stop. Just. And he realizes and he knows Right now, they need me to comfort them. Jesus is everything you need. So even when life brings all these difficult things to you, he knows how to take care of you. He knows how to comfort you. As well, the Bible tells us that God works everything out for our benefit. Matthew 8, 28 says it like this, that we know that God cares, uh, causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. You and I, we get into difficult situations and, you know, we, we try to work things out. We try to figure out how are we going to get out of this? How is this going to be okay? Who do we need to call? What things do we need to set in order? And God's saying, I already have it done. He is the only one who knows how to take everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and put it into something that works for your benefit. That's how amazing God is. That's the God that you and I serve, and he knows how to take care of us. You know, and another reason I, that I've, I've learned for the roller coaster ride of life in this journey is simply the fact, as, as Paul talked about, that God will never be done working in us and on us. God won't be done working on us. I thought I could become a Christian that didn't need any more work to be done on him. But that's never the case. In fact, the older I've gotten, the more I've realized I need God to continue working on me because I don't know what I'm doing. It's, it's interesting, you know. Uh, there are moments, especially uh, in immature seasons, where we think we can figure this stuff out and just have it all together. But the more of this journey that you're on, the more life that you experience, you realize, I absolutely don't know anything, and I need God to work in me all the stuff that's messed up. We got any messed up people in the house tonight? Come on, we're all in this together. So God will continue to work on you, to work in you, and the Bible's very clear about that. He'll never stop. I love that God is a God who accepts us exactly the way that we are. I am so glad that I did not have to fix myself and clean myself up before I presented myself to him. But I came exactly as I was, and he met me with open arms and said, Welcome home, my son. I love that. Yes, God accepts us just the way we are. But he loves us too much to leave us that way. He loves us too much to leave us that way. I love how Ephesians 3, Paul writes to the church in Ephesus and says this in verses 14 through 19. When I think of all of this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow, grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep 
His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. God is working in us. He is doing something in you and in me that we could not do on our own. And I want to encourage you that as God is working in you, I want you to first remember that God is a loving heavenly father. He loves you. He's a good God. We sang about it tonight in those worship songs. He loves you. He's good he, in everything that he does. He cannot step out of his character, which is love. He cannot become an absent father. He cannot become one who doesn't know what we need. He's, he can't become a father who doesn't provide for us. Our God is the perfect father always and forever. And he loves you. Because he loves you, I encourage you, pursue him and his love. Do you realize it said that as your roots grow down in his love, you will become strong. His love is what makes you strong. Not you figured out all the intricacies of life and the perfect combination to make this work and that work and to find all the right favor and blessings. He said, simply let your roots grow down into my love and you will become strong in life. So pursue him. And his love, allow wherever you're at in life right now, I don't know where everybody's at, what you're going through, but I, I tell you what, if you refocus your life right now to say, I'm going to pursue God and I'm going to pursue his love, whatever situation you find yourself in, it's going to go better for you. I can promise you that. It's not necessarily going to go the way you think it'll go. But God is going to do incredible things as we pursue him and his love. I want to encourage you tonight, embrace the work that he is doing. Embrace the work that he is doing. We, we've got, you could go to Barnes & Noble tonight and, and look through a whole section called self-help. We, we could hit, you could YouTube and spend all the way till tomorrow morning watching te, uh, uh, lectures and people talk about how you can do life better. And I just want to encourage you tonight, I'll save you the money, I'll save you the time, embrace the work that God is doing in you, and stop trying to figure it out on your own. Embrace the work that he's doing in your life, let him be the one to do it. And when you do that, you can rely on his grace. I've come to find out that the grace of God is not just some little side thing that we leave over here for when we can't figure things out. It is actually the power to my life to live the way that God has called me to live. It is the power and the strength that I need to become who God has created me to be and to do what God has called me to do. Paul, writing in another letter, said, I have been given a thorn in my side that causes me pain and anguish and it's an annoyance and I've asked God three times to remove it from my life. And each time God has said no. Did you know that sometimes God says no to you? No to me? He said no. Why? God says because my grace is all you need. My grace is sufficient and my power works best in your weakness. I'll just let you know, if you want to dive into that, 2 Corinthians If you want to dive into that, it will begin to change your life radically. As you realize the power and the strength that you need in your life starts with God's grace. Did you realize that Paul said actually before that, he said the the thorn in my side, the thorn in my flesh was given to me by God so I would not become proud. To keep me from getting to a place where I think I have arrived, I've gotten it all figured out, I have, I have locked the, unlocked the combination. In order to keep me from becoming proud, God's given me a thorn in my side. And as I've asked him to remove it, he said no. Because I work best when you are weak. And my grace is all that you need. So rely on God's grace. Rely on his grace. It fills all the gaps. Even in things like being a husband and being a father, I say, God, I'm going to try my best. P- please let your grace fill all the gaps. Whatever stages of life that you find yourself in right now, realize that God's grace will fill every gap that you have. So rely on that. And when it's all said and done, trust him to work it out. 
Trust Him to work it out. He can put together for you and for me a life and a journey that you and I could never dream about. And I just want to encourage you tonight to allow Him to be the one that works it out. You know, life's, life's journey will continue to have ups and downs as well. It will have the turns and the crazy moments because God won't stop using you to accomplish his plans and purpose. He won't stop. Paul talked about it, how his life has been poured out. Every drop has been used because God won't stop using you for his plans and his purpose. God has one plan to reach this broken in this fallen world. God has one plan in shedding the light of Jesus in this dark world. And it's you and me. It's his church. And we all know the church is not a building. The church is people. It's the sons and daughters of God who have claimed Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And God says, I have one plan. Plan A, there's no plan B. There's no different route. He's not going to change his mind. He's using you and me. And he's never going to stop. And so that means our journey will continue to have ups and downs. But God's going to keep using us. And so as we find ourselves in those places in life, I want to encourage you, simply be available. Be available. Be available for whatever God calls you to do, for whatever God wants you to do. For some of you, literally, that may mean, and some of this is more reality than some of you wanted to, to experience, that may mean to be at home with your kids, raising them and taking care of them. You may never stand in front of people and preach. You, you may never find yourself leading a Fortune 500 company. But God has called you some, to some incredible kids. And he says, I want you to raise these kids up knowing that God loves them and Jesus is their Savior. For some of us, it may simply be, what is God calling us to do? I'm available, God. How would you use me? Walk across the street. And invite somebody to Generation Church. For some of you, it may be being that boss and, and that small business owner. Some of you, it may be actually expressing the love of Jesus through your actions and the things that you do in life. But I encourage you, be available for whatever God calls you to do. Be available. I love how Colossians 3 uh, says it in verses 16 and 17. He says, let the message about Christ and all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus. You represent Jesus in everything you do or say and give thanks through him to God the Father. He continues on in verse 23 and 24 where he says to work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. You're not working for people. You're working for the Lord. And so he says remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master you are serving is Christ. You, you may think, well, yeah, my boss says this and I got this, you know, authority and the level of leadership and all this kind of stuff. They're not your boss. Jesus is. I, I just want to encourage some of you right now, if you would refocus the way you handle life, whether it's at home, whether it's with family, whether it's at work or, or with the hobbies you do, if you look at this and say, God, I'm going to do everything for you because I'm a representative of you and I'm going to work as unto the Lord, not people, this will radically change the way you encounter this journey. You will begin to enjoy things in a much greater way. I encourage you, be available for the work that God wants to do through you. And at, as we continue in this journey, can I encourage you to choose his results. Choose the results that God wants for your life. I, I read to you Ephesians chapter 3. I stopped in verse 19. I want to finish it out in verse 20 where it says, All glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more that we might ask or think. Choose the results that God has for your journey, for your life. I, 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 think, I think I'm a pretty like, imaginative guy. I think I can think of, of a lot of things. There's been a lot of moments over my life where I thought I have prayed some crazy prayers, and I can't believe I just asked God to do that in my life. And yet God is saying, 
I, I can do more than you even know how to ask for, let alone even think up and imagine to ask for. I, I, I know if you're like, I mentioned I don't like roller coasters because I don't like being out of control, right? It's, it's why me and my wife don't like riding in the same car together. <laughs> I love my wife. We've had to put some rules down while we drive with each other, right? And I, I may be nice every now and then and say, hey, babe, would you like to drive? But secretly, I'm hoping she says no because <laughs> I want to be in control. We, we want to think we've got control of this and, and you know what, in five years I'll be here, in ten years I'll do that, and blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. And I'm learning as I mature and get older and grow in my relationship with my Heavenly Father that my life's a lot more enjoyable. This journey is a lot more fun when I just choose His results and whatever He has for me. And I, I just want to encourage you, some of you know this right now, it doesn't look like you think it's going to look like. It doesn't end up being... At 37 right now where I'm at, I, I'm, I mean, if you would have seen some of the things I put down in the journal, like goals that I came up with and where I thought I would be at this time, it's, it's funny. <laughs> I was reading them just recently as I was packing up my stuff, like, and I was laughing at myself. It doesn't look like, and, and you go through things that you never thought you'd go through, but I found that. This journey is, a, is, is, is so much greater when I choose his results rather than mine. So allow the one who is infinitely, who, who can accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think to be the one responsible for the results of your journey. I, uh, I really do love this story, Tower of Terror. I try to tell it as much as I can just because it's fun to tell. Um, I have not yet since been on that ride. And that's not because I haven't had the opportunity. In fact, it's been harder as my, my oldest son, you saw him, as he gets older, I have to keep coming up with new excuses why we can't go on it. <laughs> it's like, no, son, I think the ride's broken. Um, the line is too long, whatever it is. Uh, but what was interesting, as Disney does so well, when I finished the ride, I came out and I found myself in a gift shop with all these trinkets and toys and all this kind of stuff, you know, that you could buy. And I found this great shirt. And it said, I rode the Tower of Terror and survived. I was like, we need that shirt for 2020, right? I lived through 2020 and I'm still around, you know, like I rode the Tower of Terror and survived. What a great shirt. When I walked out of the gift shop, I looked to my left and not very far from me was the entrance to the ride where the line started. And me being the guy who loves roller coaster rides thought, man, what, what was I doing? I could have just walked in the store and gotten the t-shirt. I didn't have to go through all that. <laughs> man, I wish I would have known that. My hope though for, for you and for me here today, for all of us who love Jesus, is that we wouldn't just simply walk in the store and get the t-shirt, but we would actually accept the invitation to join Jesus on this journey, on this ride we call life. I know it can be like the Tower of Terror sometimes, and it can feel up and down, and you can feel discombobulated and not know which direction you're going in sometimes. But we serve a God who loves you, who loves me, who knows how to take care of us in our darkest and toughest times. We serve a God who cares about us so much that he will continue to work in and on us. We serve a God who wants to use us and, and join our life and our journey with his. And so I want to encourage you tonight as we wrap it up I want to encourage you that God has a plan and a purpose for every single person in this place. I don't believe in mistakes. I, 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 don't, I don't believe in accidents. I don't care what anybody's told you. Pastor Ryan said it great last week. There may be illegitimate parents. There are no illegitimate children. God has numbered your days before you even lived one of them. 
and you are here for a purpose. I don't care if you're 75 years old in, in this moment, in this room tonight, or watching online with us. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. And if you will join him in the journey, you will get to experience a fullness to life and an, and an enjoyment to life that you never knew could be possible. I want to encourage you with that tonight. Would you, would you be one that joins Jesus on this journey? Would you let him take you through every season that life brings your way? Would you let him work in you and through you? Would you be available in God using your life for his glory. Let me pray for you tonight. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes simply in a moment of privacy and concentration. I first want to pray for those that are here tonight and you have not yet started your journey with Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But something tonight is stirring you. You feel pulled and you feel like I want to make that choice to follow Jesus. I want to make that choice to make him Lord and Savior of my life. And the good thing is you don't have to figure it all out tonight. You don't have to know all the details. But it simply says it's easy. All you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. So I want to pray for you. If that's you tonight, just simply pray this prayer with me and say, Dear God, today I recognize that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. I believe in your son Jesus that he lived on this earth a perfect life. And that in his death and resurrection, it is enough to save me. So I declare my life is yours. And from now on, I live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. And God, I pray for every person in this place that finds himself on a journey, in the journey of life. May we be able to embrace the journey, enjoy the journey, rather than focus on a destination. I pray, God, that you would help us as life brings up difficult things for our lives, even dark moments, that we wouldn't jump ship, but we would allow you, Jesus, to be everything that we need. And God, as you're continually working in us and through us, I pray that we would trust you. You're a good father who loves us. May we embrace the work you're doing in us and rely solely on your grace to give us the strength and the power we need to become who you've called us to be and to do what you've called us to do. God, I pray as you continue to use us for your glory, for your plans, for your purposes, that we would be available and that when it's all said and done, we choose your results, knowing that you can accomplish infinitely more that we might ask or think. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.